seven N S one A. This is seventh grade, the number system part one with the subpart A. What I'm going to be doing with these videos is I'm going to be taking these um, standards, the Common Core State Standards, um, with all of the words that they have in there and try to explain what the standard is trying to tell you. In this part, we are going to be talking about the number line a lot and integers on the number line and how we are able to use the idea of opposites um, to combine those quantities to make a zero out of them. Here are some terms I'd like you to know. So please pause the video, take out your journals, and define them as best as you can. Here is a picture of a number line diagram. You are very familiar with the number line. I am going to discuss uh, the sides of zero. We have the right side of zero and the left side of zero. Obviously, the right side of zero, the numbers are increasing in size, which means they are getting larger. Those are called the positive numbers. And then the center is uh, called the origin or zero. And as we move to the left, which is what we're really going to be dealing with um, much of the standard, is the negative numbers. And as you see, even though they are increasing in number size from right to left, in reality, those numbers are getting smaller and smaller the farther away you go from zero. So on the right side of zero, the farther away you go from zero, the numbers get bigger. And on the left side of zero, the farther away they get, they're actually getting smaller. How are we going to compare them on a number line? If I were to say, what is negative 3 compared to negative 10? And when you use comparisons, they want you to use the symbols such as greater than, or I'm sorry, that's less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, depending upon what the numbers are given to you. And when I teach this, I like to use the idea of money. So if I'm looking at negative 3 and negative 10, the negative to me means I lost money. You know, I don't have it anymore. It's gone. So I lost $3 or I lost $10. Well, what would you rather do? Would you rather lose $3 or lose $10? I know you don't want to lose anything, but if it were to happen, which one would you rather lose? I think you'd all rather lose $3. So the symbol replaced here would have to be greater than. So negative 3 is greater than negative 10. Look at your number line diagram. Negative 3 is located pretty close to the 0, and negative 10 is located all the way over here to the left, which means as we go left, these numbers are decreasing in size. So negative 3 is greater than negative 10. How about 5 and negative 1? 5 is like saying $5. I have $5 in my pocket. My friend lost a dollar. So would you rather have $5 or lose a dollar. I would rather have five dollars. So five is greater than negative one. Take it to the number line. As you recall, here's your zero or your origin. As you go to the right of zero, the numbers are larger. And as you go to the left, they get smaller. So five located all the way here on the right would have to be greater than negative 1 who sits to the left of 0. How about negative 3 and positive 3? Same situation. You could go right to the number line and think of the rules I gave you previously in this video and say, OK, negative 3 is to the left of 0 and positive 3 is to the right of 0. So it's got to be positive 3 is greater than 
Or think of it in terms of money, like I mentioned. Would you rather lose $3 or would you rather have $3? I think we all would rather have positive $3. Let's talk about opposites. The standard is um, really emphasizing this word opposite, and they want you to understand that zero is the main player of opposites. An opposite is a number that is the same distance from zero, but on opposite sides of zero. Let me grab that number line from the previous page, and maybe I'll just uh, get rid of this for you and make the number line the main focus here. So if I were to see zero right here in the center and just pick out a random number like four, so if I put a little arrow here by four, an opposite is basically the number of units away from zero, one, two, three, four, but on the opposite side of zero negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So this is the opposite of 4. So very quickly, tell me what the opposite of negative 9 is. Well, here's negative 9. Count the units away from 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So positive 9 is the opposite of negative 9. And if I were to put them together, where are we going to land? If I were to add those two up together, we're going to land right here at 0. So negative 9 added to positive 9 is equal to 0. And this is the main part of the standard today. I have a real world situation that we might be able to put this into effect. I'm going to read this problem out to you and I'm going to kind of describe a little bit about the game of golf so it, this example makes sense to you. In golf, par is the expected number of strokes to finish a hole. Your score for the game is the sum of your number of strokes above or below par. The player with the least score is actually the player that's going to win. So here's an example in red. On hole one, Mr. Wirtz had a score of two over par. I'll just tell you that's you know, pretty common for me. What will get me back to even par? How am I going to get back to zero? So I start on the first hole of my um, game of golf, and I had two over zero. Let's go look at that on a golf course. So here we have the green. That's where I need to get. Maybe I could draw a little flag in here. Right here's our flag. I need to get right in that hole. And I have to hit a golf ball. Let's say that I'm playing maybe there's different tee boxes that you can hit from. Let's say I'm hitting from maybe this tee box back here. The idea of golf, they say that the average player should be able to hit their golf ball into this hole in four or less shots. So let's see how that's going to look. Mr. Wirtz has his driver, that's a club that he uses, and he's going to hit the ball with his driver out to what we call the fairway. So let's say he lands right about there. So that was shot number one. Now he's going to take out a different club, and he's going to try to get as close to this red pin as possible. Um, Let's say he goes and he kind of curves it around the bend here and lands it right about there. There's shot number two. And if he was really good, this Mr. Words guy, he would take another club and he would hit the ball onto the green and it would probably bounce and roll right about there. 
That is shot number three. And he takes out a putter and he knocks the ball into the hole. And that is what we call par. I was able to get from the tee box to the pin in the hole in four shots. That was par. Unfortunately, Mr. Wirtz has a lot of excuses when he plays golf, as do many other golfers that we know. I believe when I played on this day, um, we had a very large wind. Draw that flag back. It was very, very windy. You can see the flag is blowing straight up. And when Mr. Wirtz went from the tee box, he hit his first ball and it really faded over here. Now, he's under the trees. So he's not going to be able to get a lot of loft on his next shot. That was shot number one. So he's going to have to hit a low liner out from the trees. And it landed right about there. So that was his second shot. He's very discouraged right now. His next shot, remember it was very windy, so he was going for the green in, in his next shot. However, he landed into the sand. And that was his third shot. Mr. Wirtz isn't very good out of the sand. I will just be honest about that. He actually took his next shot and shot it over the green for four. He pitched on to the green for five. He missed the, the hole and then he putted in to the hole on his sixth shot. Well, if this is a par four and it took him six shots to do it, what would you say that was in terms of par? You would say that that was plus two over par. So after the first hole, instead of being zero or under, zero or minus strokes, I am really struggling on this course and I am two over par. So what's going to get me back to zero? What's going to get me back to par on the second hole? If I go to hole number two now, what am I going to have to do miraculously to get from a two over zero back to zero? Down here on the bottom, I have that situation. On the first hole, on hole number one, I was two over. And on hole number two, whatever par is, I'm going to have to do two less than that to get back to where I started. So positive 2 added to negative 2 is equal to 0 or par. I hope that's not too confusing for you. Tonight, in your journal, I'd like you to define the given terms on page 2 of the flip chart. Write a few sentences on what you learned from this video and I would also like you in your journal to describe one real world situation in which opposite quantities combine to make zero, kind of like I did with the golf example, and also be ready to share your example with the class. See you all tomorrow.